everybody joining us. I'm sure we're going to have more folks rolling in. We'll just wait. Well, I guess it's just six o'clock now. And we have, let's see, we've got, um, maybe as commissioners, we can just wave for a second when um, I'm Kasha, chair of the Parks Commission. We've got Stephanie, Andrew, Lincoln, and I think we are missing Emily, but I'm sure she will be on soon. And then for anybody who doesn't know, we also have um, some park staff with us tonight. We have Alec, who I think most people know, and Kara. Any other park staff with us right now? Okay. Well, I'm sure um, more folks will join us. Um, let's get started with at least the... Um... Kasha, I'm getting a feedback. I don't know if it's somebody else. I guess the best practice would be mute yourself if you're not talking with this many people and maybe that would take. Yeah, I think that's helpful. Did that go away? Okay, great. Um, so let's go ahead with the December 13th agenda and November 15th minutes. And while people are joining, we can keep, take care of that little piece of business. Can I get a motion? That they sign the respect for marriage act in the law. I'll make a motion to approve last month's meeting minutes and uh, tonight's agenda. All right. I'll second. Stephanie seconds. Great. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. And since we do have a bigger crew tonight, if you don't mind keeping yourself muted, um, if you're just logging on, and then if your bandwidth is struggling, you can always turn your video off to make things a little bit clearer for you. Thank you. And we, um, I do in the minutes, I do like to keep track of um, who attends each of our meetings. So I have the commissioners and staff here. Um, if everybody could maybe um, drop the names of who's, you know, especially because we might have two or three people watching from a single computer, if you could just drop your name into the chat. Um, and then, um, Stephanie, can I give you the job of storing everybody's names? Sure, I can do that. Perfect. Thank you. That would be helpful. Thanks, everybody. Um, I still don't see Emily here. I just texted to see if she's having trouble joining. But um, Lincoln, do you want to go ahead and get started? Sure. Yep. We definitely can get started. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, Kasha, did you want to share your screen or do you want me to share my screen and then we could switch? Or? Um, I, Stephanie, I emailed the president not to give you too many jobs. I also, I emailed you the slides. Do you mind sharing your screen? You probably can't capture names at the same time. Yeah, let me find it and then I'll share my screen. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'll just, I'll just go ahead while, while Stephanie's doing that and get us all oriented. Thanks everybody for coming tonight. It looks like we're, we're almost at 30 attendance, which I think in my memory is the biggest meeting we've had so far this, this year. So thanks for coming out. Um, I just wanted to give a quick overview of the management process for Hubbard and North Branch um, to date. So it's been uh, a year long effort here. If you haven't uh, been tracking us so far, we started last uh, summer, I believe, with a citywide survey uh, that the Parks Department put out. Um, perfect. Great. Yeah, I guess if you want to flip to the next slide, that's what I'm talking on now, Stephanie. Thanks. Um, and yeah, even before I get into what we've done, I just want to zoom out and, and talk about for a moment why we manage um, and the Parks Commission, you know, our, our mission here is, is ensuring that our parks are 
um, accessible uh, forever for everyone. So it's, it's a big mission, but that's, that's what we're trying to do here. And uh, last year we started this by writing a plan for Blanchard Park, which some of you on this call have, were a part of, um, and we partnered with Vermont Master Naturalists. And we did a survey there and a plan. And then we moved our sites to Hubbard and North Branch combined. And we used the, you know, some of the results from the citywide survey that had 1,300 respondents. And um, you know, that, that survey, along with the more uh, specific survey about Hubbard and North Branch, looked at what people were using, doing in the parks, um, you know, <clears throat> what was bringing them there, also what was keeping some folks away from the parks, or what was a barrier for entry for some folks. So a lot of good, um, you know, responses there, and that was a digital format. For Hubbard and North Branch specifically, we had a dozen guided walks, um, and these were these were widely attended, and we went through the many different zones of the parks. If you remember, we kind of broke up both Hubbard and North Branch into these zones to kind of help uh, think about you know management in, in specific locations. Um, and I'm getting a little freedom. getting another speaker and here. If you, everyone doesn't mind this muting is the themselves. This the first time since 2010 that the Vermont um, Constitution has been changed. And that time, I, 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 I think you are in control of, of the um, Zoom the control. Primary. Can you mute everybody? January, else? we'll mark a new congressional session, and Vermont will have new representation in the Senate. Uh, it, looks like it, it, looks like it comes as Senator Patrick Leahy is stepping down from politics. Political My Albert computer says it's coming from Paul. Paul, could you so please Captain, mute what yourself? What does Senator final days in office look like? Well, Kat, for once, the senior, <laughs> senator, the senior um, senator is in a meeting. Well, we can listen to the news. Day, That'll be all right. To right. Get a congressional right. spending plan across the finish line, uh, avoiding a government uh, shutdown. Uh, but uh, as uh, Senator Leahy uh, steps back from Washington after almost two years, he remembers Paul, uh, a time where Congress wasn't so divided. On a September Tuesday, gridlock on the streets of Washington is especially bad. At the Capitol, outgoing Senator Patrick Leahy looks out on the National Mall from his corner pro town. Um, does anyone know Paul? He says gridwalk in Congress has gone to worse too. What can be done to restore trust mm -hmm. and faith mm -hmm. in Alec, the I think you're the meaning host, so you can start talking with each other. I think you should be able to. Okay. Perfect. It seems to gone gone quiet. Um so that was a little bit of the six o'clock news update, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot back here <laughs> to the parks. And uh, yeah, so we did the, we did the walks and, and the talks and we got people out in the field and, and we also did this digital survey element. And then we did sort of this community, community open house feel at North Branch. Some of you remember where we had different tables set up with a commissioner and we talked about the whole parks and you could kind of go from table to table and give specific comments on each park zone. Um, we also partnered with the Conservation Commission and we hired a UVM field naturalist stu student to do a uh, this is a graduate student, Erica Hampel, who did a fantastic ecological survey wall to wall of Hubbard and North Branch Park. And we have those mapped. Um, and it's, you know, Erica not only did this work, but she also took uh, people out, you know, um, lots and lots of people showed up for these guided field walks that Erica did as part of the Montpelier Place program. Um, so that was really a fantastic way to, to celebrate the park. And uh, then we've had these series of, of, of meetings where, you know, these, the Erica presented their findings. And then we also discussed a draft plan objective in October. And last month um, was a discussion of the draft actions. And, and now we're, you know, we're here tonight to hear from you all about the, uh, your specific comments on the draft that we posted. And I just want to, you know, I'll pass it over to Kasha in a moment, but I just want to say that this, the whole process has really been inspiring for me just to see how many people are passionate in Montpelier about the parks and the different, you know, experiences and years of use everyone has shared. And um, I really feel like this year has been a, you know, celebration for Hubbard and North Branch. And it's just great to see so many passionate people come out and talk about how they use the park. So I'm excited to hear what everybody has to say tonight. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Kasha to talk about a little bit of how tonight is going to flow. Excellent. Thanks, Lincoln. Um, and I'll echo that. It's been really great to have so many people participating in this and not just 
um, sharing feedback, but also asking great questions and approaching this as a learning opportunity and learning about the forest and um, connecting with other people across the community um, um, person to person has been really fantastic. Um, tonight, um, right now we have basically the process, the way this has been working as we've collected community feedback and, and a variety of ways like Lincoln talks about. Um, we worked through uh, the goals as a commission and kind of the big picture and then worked through the action table. And what we have right now um, in the, the final product that we're creating in the management plan, similar to what we did for Blanchard, we'll have an intro and description of the parks, this objectives and action table, which is kind of the meat of the plan that says this is what we want to do and how we're going to do it. Um, and then also um, lots and lots of background information, including Erica's um, natural communities inventory, which is like 30 pages of natural inventory about the parks, um, deeds that have been transferred through the years, a lot of historic documentation that um, about the parks. Um, but what we're zeroing in on tonight is the objectives and actions table. Um, and so there are some comment opportunities, obviously tonight, um, we are going to be looking, discussing North Branch first and then Hubbard. Um, for each of the parks, we've divided um, the goals up into um, kind of these buckets um, of people management goals, goals that address how people relate to the parks and, and use in the parks, and then kind of nature and education management goals. Um, and we simply did that just for the ease of discussion and grouping things together so that we can make sure that everybody, all the topics have plenty of time. Um, I please um, keep comments to two minutes or less as we go through here, just to make sure um, various people have time to speak. Um, and um, we really wanna hear from a range of people. And so really support people whose maybe ideas haven't been heard or a topic that we haven't touched on yet, um, speaking up and coming forward. And also those people who have had an opportunity to say something kind of stepping back and letting others um, share their thoughts as well. Um, in addition to tonight, there's also a form online. It's through SurveyMonkey, um, and this is just a way um, to um, accept comments as well digitally. So if you have friends or family or whatnot who aren't here or you leave this meeting and you have things that you want to um, contribute, there is that online survey. Um, I'm going to go... Um, maybe Emily, could you drop the um, links into the chat so that people can get, grab them? Um, the first link there is for um, online comments. And then I also wanted to note that um, we have a little bit of a presentation tonight, but the action table is pretty um, pretty comprehensive and it's many pages long. So we can't really put all of it into a PowerPoint. And so um, as we go through this tonight, if you can, um, review the information on the parks page of the city website. The staff have been doing a great job keeping that up to date. The full plan is there um, and you can get all the details. And I really recommend opening that up and using that as we follow along tonight. And with that, let's kick it over to Lincoln to talk about North Branch. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about part one of North Branch, uh, which is sort of the people-oriented goals, if you will. Um, and there are three of these. And, and again, I'll just go big picture about some of the feedback we got um, overall in, in our outreach about North Branch. And a big one was this uh, need for more river access and the desire to you know, be able to swim more and just like have more wildlife viewing places to relax by, by the river. Um, people love the multi-use trails. Um, there, uh, there is, you know, strong support for for biking year-round and a strong grooming effort year-round for for biking and uh, skiing, running, hiking are all other activities in solitude that people love about the park. We did hear that, um, you know, pedestrians, specifically people on foot, were feeling excluded on multi-use trails, and um, you know, we we heard the need for for more walking terrain as well. And people appreciated that there were, this was a space where dogs are needing to be on leash and they could bring their dogs and they felt like, you know, comfortable taking a, taking a walk with their dogs, knowing other dogs can be leashed. And uh, they love, you know, people really love the accessibility of the river trail. There's a wide path um, with a mellow grade. So the 
three, so that's just big picture overall. The three goals we're going to kind of jump into right now are goal number two, which is increased communication and education of trail users and park policy, etiquette and multi-use trail safety. So the big objective here that we're trying to kind of use to measure whether we succeed in this goal would be an increased feeling of safety and enjoyment of multi-use trails, uh, with more signage in the park, entrances, intersections, and perhaps using social media platforms. So we're planning quick overview of actions would be to collaborate with um, the Montpelier Youth Conservation Commission to help with outreach and just trail safety messaging and best use etiquette. Um, we want to maybe create some slow zones at intersections, especially coming into the, the main river, the main river, riverside trail and use signage to just have more explicit policy um, surrounding dog leashing and, and like, you know, just waste cleanup standards. Um, so we would do signing, you know, along the, along the trail and over by the pump track. Also, you know, prohibiting motorized vehicles in the pump track and along the river trail and the whole park. Um, and also making paper maps more available is part of this, uh, Part of this action and getting those out towards you know into the community so that's a little bit about that goal and then we're moving along here number three would be collaborating with north north branch nature center this is an obvious partner because they are adjacent and um, a lot of people don't even know when they're leaving you know one property and entering the next so that would be a big part of this goal is just letting people know the distinction between the two different properties and any kind of um you know, differences in terms of use when you enter one or exit the other. And we would really like to support and um, collaborate on their educational efforts and just the awareness of, you know, and, and efforts for ecological restoration efforts with North Branch. So we would be partnering them with on a regular basis, doing, doing walks throughout the park at educational offerings, um, you know, looking at what they're doing for accessibility in their property and seeing if we can kind of extend that into the river trail, uh, thinking about invasives mitigation strategies, and also work with them to develop an online resource for the, the ecological survey that was just done with Erica. So we really want to get those maps and all of Erica's work onto, you know, a digital platform so you can link right from the park's website and see everything that all the work she's done. And then finally in this section, before we jump into the conversation, I'll talk, tell you about number six, which is protecting the ecological integrity and natural history of natural communities. Um, so yeah, here we are, we're really looking at, you know, those places that Erica has identified as significant on a state level or municipal level, and there's a ranking system for this, and we're looking at, you know, the, this A ranking, um, sensitive natural communities, uh, specifically the, you know, northern hardwood seepage forest, which is uh, one of the larger, larger examples of that natural community in the state, and it goes right along the, the whole river trail. Um, there's a lot of ash, black ash along there, so thinking about you know, how, how are we um, preparing for emerald ash borer in Montpelier and making sure those resources and sensitive communities are accounted for as we move forward with, with other projects or um, any kind of, uh, you know, building or anything that might happen in the park area. So that's a pretty good uh, overview right there. And um, Kasha, do you, how are we, how do you want to take comments for this? We're going to do it as a group. It looks like we're at 41. Let's go ahead and open. I think we can um, do comments all together here. Um, and um, if more folks join, you know, later we can move into breakout sessions if we need to, but let's all stick together for now. Um, and one thing I did want to mention, just um, I, I missed in my intro, is that um, we as commissioners have talked amongst ourselves and, and heard from all of you to shape this plan, but now that you have something to respond to, um, you know, we are here to listen to you. So this is your space for all of you on the call to, to speak up and share ideas, things you support, things that you would like tweaked. So um, this, is, this is your space um, for us to, to listen to you this evening. So yeah, let's open it up for um, comments and questions on these first few goals, goals two, three, and six of the North Branch plan.
And there's a, you can use a raise hand function in, in Zoom here, or if you wanna unmute um, and just speak up, we'll try not to talk over each other. Um, when just to maybe spur conversation a little bit, one thing that we did hear from somebody who's not on the call tonight is the idea to um, do some active stream restoration in this area. Um, the it's the land is recovering from. Um, oh wait, I'm on the wrong goal, aren't I? Sorry. Um, oh no, I am. Um, the the um, with the natural communities piece. Sorry. Um, doing stream restoration, the, the area is covering from the its use as farm fields back in the day, and the streams are pretty washed out. So an idea to add in something about um, uh, putting down down wood into the streams in order to help the land to recover and retain more of the water, especially as we head into a time with increased flooding in Vermont. So um, that's an example of, of what somebody's already shared on this section. Shelby. Bone Shelby Perry says, I'd love to see the word wildlife in goal six, along with natural communities, just to explicitly recognize that wildlife move place to place and don't just stick to the natural communities. I'm also wondering, um, Kasha, do you think we it might help to stimulate conversation if we show the whole chart, like with all the actions, like more specific actions and objectives? Um, we sure could, except it's very large and hard to see the whole thing at once. Shoot. Maybe somebody could summarize. Um, you know, I'm here to talk about uh, the dogs in the park issue, so I'm not. I don't have the whole document in front of me, so I'm not sure if one if goal two is the goal that in includes that. Um, so um, are you, um, I think many, much of the people that we're hearing from about dogs are referring to Hubbard Park, yes. um, which we're going to get to after North Branch. Thanks, Stephanie. Hi, um, this is Emily Seifert, and I just wanted to say that I'm thrilled that you are including goals about protecting the natural communities in the management plan. Thanks, Emily. That's great. Thank you. This is Chris Hammer. I could just add to the natural communities include the wildlife that's in those communities. It's not not just the plants and stuff it's it's kind of the whole package but you could add wildlife to it too in case that's not clear but um i guess my comment i remember looking at something earlier and, I, and maybe it's not one of the three goals that we're looking at right now I, i'm looking at this thing on my phone and i can barely read it but it was the thing about building a trail um or a bridge across the river so that you could basically walk to coming street where there is a trail, but it's sort of a dead end trail. And um, I know that just as a comment, when we, when we, I was on a commission 25 years ago, and when we built the bridge that connects North Branch um, to North Branch Park, there were some real problems with just the permitting in terms of the kind of clearances you have to have. And that area where we're talking about crossing to Cumming Street is really low. And I'm not sure a bridge would work there, but it's just something to be aware of if you're looking into you. With that one, we had to make sure we were far enough above the river. And there it sort of worked because one side you're way up above the river, but the other side that would have to be built up. So it's just something to think about. Um, and I don't know if that was a condition of funding, federal you know, money in terms of bridge design. And if you didn't have federal money, maybe you wouldn't have that issue. But Anyway, it's just something to think about. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I think right now there's a real issue of you can't really walk from 
downtown to the park without going on streets and stuff and to have a, a little more back country way to get there would be great. I don't remember which goal that was in, but it was a, that's something that stood out for me. No, that's great, Chris. Thank you. <clears throat> Lincoln, do you want to give an overview of the other three goals if we're um, and maybe shift to the human management goals? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, and to answer Chris's question, yeah, that was like the fifth goal, which had to do with expanding neighborhood connectivity. So I'll just kind of go over those now, and then we can open it up. And um, you know, if people are thinking about either either the first three or these three, uh, we can just talk about those collectively. So the the first goal, um, which which I mentioned earlier, was this increasing river access to provide more water based recreation opportunities along the North Branch. So you know, we want to make sure that there's plenty of more opportunities for uh, swimming. We want to do, you know, a boat launch, maybe uh, by where the pavilion is right now. Um, and we want to make sure that those, there are some like kind of decrepit wildlife viewing sites. Like there's like a beaver sort of lookout right by the bridge to North Branch. And we want to restore those areas and maybe put in some new benches. So people just have more options to, to view the river and, and be next to it um, and also in it. So uh, those are, and then that actually includes, oh, I was wrong. Yeah, okay. So goal one has that bridge from Mill Pond to the east side of the river. So yeah, that is um, definitely could, you know, we'll have to take it, what Chris said into consideration there. Um, but that would be one way of, you know, getting, getting onto the water. And let's see, so four. Okay, continue to maintain multi-use trails, provide recreation and adventure for all abilities. So the main objective for this goal would be to, you know, continue uh, the, the access to diverse recreational trails and also um, increase the amount of beginner trails that are available. Uh, you know, a big, a big feedback point that we heard here is that the, the trails are challenging, specifically the bicycle trails and kids who are just learning and progressing, you know, want to have more options, uh, you know, things that maybe aren't as, as steep um, or as narrow. So we are going to be looking at a plan for kid mountain bike, a kid's mountain bike trail, like some features to go along the river path. Um, that's something that's, that's in the works. And looking into engaging with um, neighbors around the pump track and, and looking at sort of uh, the, the wetland area there and considering the possible expansion of a pump track, maybe to, you know, be you know, more accessible for folks who are just learning or just, you know, more fun in that area. And we also want to be partnering directly with Mamba and East Montpelier Trails and looking at the sort of evolution of e-bikes and what um, that could, you know, the, the benefits of accessibility with e-bikes and also, um, you know, wanting to balance the and not compromise other management goals and um, exclude any other people by potentially, you know, allowing some of those in, in the park. And also just continue all the grooming efforts that go on there. Uh, you know, in the winter, it's a huge effort to keep those trails groomed. And um, even, you know, in the summer, there's a lot of volunteer work. Um, so we, you know, we want to support that and keep those running. Um, and also thinking about a, you know, a less steep trail up to Sparrow Farm is something that we want to look at for, uh, for riders and, and walkers and runners alike. Um, so that is four. And then this fifth goal on expanding neighborhood connectivity and walking terrain within the park. So this, this really, you know, spawns from uh, wanting to get me, more people able to access the park by foot, not having to drive their car there. So, um, and something else, you know, that we were hearing was kind of a little bit of, you know, hesitation of walking on some of the multi-use trails just because of, you know, the bikes and, and people walking. So we are, we are, you know, proposing uh, to look into a kind of foot and ski traffic only trail in the northern hillside of the park that would kind of take you up above um, into some, some of the more wild and scenic feelings of the North Branch Hill and have that trail be maintained exclusively for you know, wildlife viewing and, and solitude walking and skiing. Um, and we would also be looking into 
securing an easement um, or landowner agreement and can uh, for a trail that would connect the North Street neighborhood right into the park. Um, so, you know, people could walk directly there. There's already existing social trails in that area. Um, and then just, just making sure the crossings on Elm Street are, um, are safe and that there is, you know, have blinking pedestrian crossing signs at North Park Drive, Trillium Hill Drive, and Finch Road. So people feel like, you know, that's not a barrier crossing the road there, especially when you're coming from Hubbard. We want that to be a pretty seamless transition for folks and not feel like they are, uh, standing on one side or the other waiting for cars to pass. So that, that is what we have for North Branch. Um, there is, you know, there is a link in the chat right now to the plan if you want to pull that up and just see sort of the, the action items that I um, specifically just kind of read from. And I think Emily or some Matt, Matt Wilson actually dropped that in the chat. 614 if you want to pull that up on your screen but we would love just to take comments um, I see a hand up and I think it is Jill Olson so please unmute yourself Jill and, and go ahead hi thanks so much can you guys hear me okay yep okay. I've been on zoom all day I don't know why I think you wouldn't be able to hear me now but um, <laughs> um, thanks so much um, I'm Jill Olson I'm the president of Mamba and really just uh, we have submitted some written comments and just wanted to just say publicly, we I, I think on the North Branch plan, we're very much in alignment with you and we really appreciate the partnership that we've had to date. Um, we're happy to continue the volunteers that we bring out and to, to help with bridge work and grooming and all of those things. Um, we did have a couple of specific suggestions around the kids trail and the pump track. Um, we just wanted, we, we just suggested adding some time frame around when the kid trail, if it's approved, might actually be built rather than just having a line about reviewing it. And we also suggest that the pump track expansion just is about is five or six years out and wondering if we can uh, maybe look at that a little a little sooner. So those were our two primary comments there. Um, and just again, while I, just while I have the floor, um, we also are, are supportive of, um, you know, trying to make sure we don't have uh, user conflicts as, as our bikes are coming off of some of the faster trails and we've helped with some reroutes already to date. So I, I just wanted people to, to know that we're, that's something we understand and care about and are willing to work to make happen. Thank you, Jill. Sure. Okay, yeah, David, go ahead. Uh, hi, this is David Miles. I just had a question on the uh, goal five, noticing the neighborhood connectivity line there and wondering about the interpart connectivity and what you know possible plans for connecting the north side of Hubbard Park to North Branch uh, on trail. I mean, I know it's groomed during the winter, but at one point I remember talk of a, a parallel trail or a, a trail to the west that might come in and connect over uh, to behind the pool. You're talking about like a biking trail? Uh, well, I was biking in part, but yeah, I, I was thinking multi-use. I mean, there there is the trail that's groomed out now, but in theory, that's not a uh, bike trail in the, in the non-winter months. Yeah, yeah, we have that. Um kind of in a, in a more Hubbard, uh, in one of the Hubbard goals, I believe. So maybe unless another commissioner wants to speak, but maybe we'll just table that until we get to Hubbard, if that's, if that sounds good, because yeah, we do, we do talk, bring that up then. But thank you. Sure thing. Kara, why don't you jump in? Thank you, Lincoln. I'm curious um, on goal five, the first objective of the trail, the Northern Hillside Trail, if there would be, um, like it sounds like it would only be for foot and skiing. And I'm curious about um, if there would be any restrictions on, um, since it's designated for wildlife viewing, if there would be any pet restrictions possibly. if that's been looked at or discussed. Yeah, it hasn't been. That's a great point um, that we'll, you know, we'll need to factor in. Um, but yeah, I don't, we, we, that has not been brought up yet. And thank you for bringing that up. We'll be, we'll be 
we will have to consider that. Did David get a chance to speak yet? I think Chris also has his hand up. Yeah, yeah, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a couple of comments. Um, you know, the multi-use trail that goes up to Sparrow Farm, I mean, most of that's outside of North Branch Park. It's on, it's on East Montpelier town land um, before it gets to Sparrow Farm. And just for a little background on that, when that was built back in 95, it was a lot of it was paid for by Vast. And so it was really a snowmobile trail. And when we laid it out, I actually walked the trail and cut a lot of the trees down. We were trying to put a meandering trail that was more appropriate for skiing. And it was kind of overruled to make it so groomers could go up and down. And, and that's why it's kind of a it's kind of a pain in the neck to ski because it's really steep and straight. And so that's part of the history of that. And I think it'd be great if there'd be a way to work with East Mount Pier Trails or whatever to, I mean, it's not really the part that until you're halfway up, it's not used by snowmobiles, snowmobiles anymore. They don't tend to go through North Branch Park. So it's not even used by snowmobiles, but it's not a very good ski trail. So it, again, it's not, it's something that's outside of the park mostly. Um, there are ways to get to the, be, get to the, get to the city boundary that aren't too bad. But once you get onto, onto East Montpelier Townland, it, it was, it's really a snowmobile trail, but it's not used anymore for that. Um, so that was just one comment. Um, the other thing is, and I, I haven't, been there recently and so i'm not sure quite what the status is but at the bridge between north branch park and the nature center there was at one time and maybe there still is a kiosk on the north branch nature center side and is that still there i don't know if that's fallen down or i haven't been there for a while um right and I, to the park this is on the north branch side yeah the i think they're talking center. about yeah, yeah. The last I heard, I think they were trying to re reconstruct something. And it, maybe it was there, and it, but anyway, it was it was basically similar to the one right at their parking lot, with maps and signage and stuff. And I think think something comparable, maybe smaller, but a, a just a a map, a sign board like those little ones that are various other places, like at the beginning of the mountain bike trail on Cumming Street, something like that. Right when you cross the bridge, that shows. North Branch Park, the trails, you know, maybe shows the connection to the nature center. Um, I don't remember seeing something like that, but it seems like that would be an ideal place to increase sort of more awareness of what's going on and where the trails are. And um, so I don't know if maybe there's one there already. I haven't seen it, but I've been there for a while. Thank you, Chris. That's that's exactly uh, what what we were thinking as well for that, you know, ensure yeah. that that bridge as you cross into the North Branch, having a little more information on the park for visitors who are coming maybe for the first time. Yeah. And I appreciate that history on that Sparrow Farm Trail um, and maybe working with Vast since they were some of the original, you know, trail builders up there to make it work for the people that are using it today. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't think Vast has anything to do with it anymore, um, at least for the lower section. They still use the upper section, but as far as I know, the original trail the landowner up there doesn't allow snowmobiles anymore. So it's it's really become a pedestrian corridor, not a, not a snow machine trail. They kind of reoriented it away from where it was originally. So I think there's an opportunity to make it more pedestrian friendly, you know, whether skiing or biking or um, hiking, whatever. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. We've got a question in the chat here from Lynn Wild. I have a question about uh, this action at the end of goal number two. What do you mean by this? Resign invasive trail to only include invasives that are present and include no biking signs at entrances. Thank you for that question. Um, right now, the invasive trail has got some great signs up, but it are it is the signs do describe species that aren't actually on the landscape. While there are other invasives on the landscape that are not signed, so part of the effort to to raise awareness and. Know, about invasives and and sort of how they can kind of outcompete native plants would be you know to make sure we have the invasives that are actually on the ground there on that on those signs along that invasive trail and we got the feedback that um, bikes were going along that trail and we you know we thought just because you know there's that main river trail right there we could keep bikes just on that or on the pump track and then leave the invasives for pedestrian foot traffic um, or or skiing
Hi, this is Alec. Um, I just want to clarify that uh, that doesn't mean removing signs about invasives that are not on the trail, right? Like it's okay. We're saying we want to have signs about all invasives, including ones that aren't on that trail, but just expand the sign set to include more invasive species. Is that correct? Alec goes there. Yeah, and you're talking about keeping the current signs up? Yeah, yeah. For example, like there's probably a sign out there about um, winged euonymus, which is not along the trail, but which is still good to have there. Yeah, I, mean, I think originally in my mind, I was like, okay, swap the signs for what's on the ground, but I, I don't see the harm if we're, if we're just adding some signs about what's, you know, to include what is on, on the ground and maybe making that, that caveat on the sign that, look, here's, Here's uh, not weed right in front of you or something. Um, I, it could add could add value to the the educational element there. Yeah, great. I mean, I know that project was grant funded, and and the intention was not to just have signs about invasives that are on that trail. It was about the common invasives you might find in Montpelier. Cool. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay, other thoughts and comments on North Branch? Dayton, go ahead. Uh, hi, everybody. Just uh, hitting, the, hitting the buttons to make sure I can talk. Can everybody hear me okay? Um, no, just wanted to make, give a comment. I may not be able to stick around for the entirety of this meeting, uh, young children, bedtimes, reading. Uh, but just wanted to comment broadly on the plans, and I've submitted my own set of comments to the Parks Commissioners, and thank you for the, the note of receipt. But I just want to sort of state publicly that I think these are good, pla these are good plans, and I stand behind the majority of these goals. Um, but I think to serve the city best, these really, need, um, these really need to include sort of abilities to measure a lot of these impacts beyond just a survey. Um, I think that the survey, while a good tool and certainly one of the more accessible tools we have um, has its flaws about really representing how parks are used. Um, and, I, and I also think that in many of these goals, like a, I'd like to have an int intelligent comment on the Northern Hillside non-bike trail, which sounds like a great addition to the North Branch Park, but without any sort of identification of which Northern Hillside that is, um, it's a little bit difficult to, to interpret. Um, so I think, that's those are just my broad level comments that could really improve i think you know overall understanding of this plan and, and its effectiveness thank thanks dayton yeah thank you there's <clears throat> there's a comment from uh john jose i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right um but he says there's important amphibian habitat on either side of the pump track located at the end of Cumming Street and amphibians migrate through the area of the pump track. I would be concerned about expansion of the pump track and impacts to amphibians and their habitats. Thanks, thanks for the, that consideration. Um, yeah, and with that and you know, with, with Dayton's comments, um, yeah, we we definitely um, you know a lot of these plans are um, to help to help guide the next ten years, and you know the projects aren't nothing is is set in stone here. We're just trying to get kind of a baseline to to work off upon, and um, all of these projects will definitely need further review. Emily's wondering if the amphibian habitat has been mapped. Um, do you know if that's part of Erica's? I, I think it's part of her survey, isn't it? I would have to look back on that. Emily, if it's not, I, that's a great question and we can make sure that it gets included in the natural communities inventory, but I, I believe it is. I have one more small comment um, there. I don't know if this would go best in goal number one about um, river access opportunities or in goal number five about walking terrain, but 
There are actually two beaver blinds. And I think John Jose actually raised this in his written comments to the commission too. There's an, another beaver blind across, another bird blind across the beaver meadow um, from the one that most people know about. And um, if we restore the trail, you know, that's stated in the plan, it, that trail would, you know, eventually lead to this beaver blind. And I'd love to see that restored as well. Um, Thanks, Alex. Arthur. Hi, I'd like to speak to goal four. Um, I think Lincoln, you alluded to this a little bit, but I think one of the challenges that we have at North Branch with the terrain that's available is that it really favors folks who are willing and able to be able to make uh, like the walk or the bike ride all the way up to the top of roll call or sap sucker. It's a, we have terrain that is wonderful and is great for folks with some abilities, but for folks who are new to biking or skiing, those trails are really, can be not as accessible. And one thing that I would really like to see is more of an emphasis on developing trail that is uh, easier to access for folks of differing abilities. And I know you, you kind of pointed at that earlier, but it's not as explicitly called out in uh, goal four as much as I, I, I personally would like to see it. I think there's mention of the, like, the kids trail. And in my mind, that really is like not the way to think about how we should be building trail. We should be thinking about making trail that's accessible to people of, of ability and not necessarily targeting towards kids um, because we want, I want more people to be able to enjoy what's there. So I just uh, I'd love to encourage you all to think about as we move forward at North Branch and think about different types of trails that are being built that we're focused on making those accessible um, as well as further improving what we already have. Thanks, Arthur. Shelby. I just wanted to jump in and, and raise my concern, I guess, that um, I love the idea of having trails for specific abilities and for broad abilities and multi-use trails. I think everybody appreciates trails, but I, um, I would like to request caution in limiting the proliferation of trails. I think the parts of North Branch that are still trailless um, deserve to stay trailless because they have wildlife values and the more we fragment them with trails the less um, value there is and so if we can find a way to meet our goals with the trails we already have by making the multi-use trails really multi-use really open to more abilities um, then maybe we can meet some of these goals with the network we have without further fragmenting um, what is fairly important connectivity habitat to like broader areas to the north. Thank, thanks for that, Shelby. <clears throat> Who's the one that writes that stuff in the? Who's the one that writes that stuff in some Here's somebody talking. Is that to the group? I think it was Deborah. Deborah, can you repeat what you just said? It was hard to hear. I think it. I think it was just incidental. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that maybe talks to what um, both Arthur and Shelby were just talking about was um, there, I don't think there's anywhere mentioned in the, this part of the plan about, you know, establishing an easier climb up onto the plateau where most of the trails are. Um, I think probably most people, walkers and bikers would agree that the biggest challenge in the North Branch is getting up to the level where most of our trails exist. Pretty much every ascent that we have is pretty steep. Um, whether you're walking or biking. 
And I think there are some options um, for how to do that. You know, it might involve getting some further permission from neighbors or whatever, but um, I would be in favor of identifying that as a goal, you know, to encourage access to, to somehow establish a less steep um, multi-use ascent into the mid-level of the park. Thank you, Alec. And I did, I did want to clarify, I think uh, Alec reminded me of, of Dayton's comments. Um, you know, if you're looking at our plan and we have goals, objectives, and actions, uh, the objectives with, with that metric of survey, um, you know, looking at a survey for, for whether or not we've achieved the goals that, you know, we, we've definitely heard that feedback and we, we do want to adopt, you know, language that clearly reflects it's not just a digital or, a, you know, mail-in survey, but that's a whole you know, outreach campaign similar to what we've done this last year. So we would be planning to do that, you know, some version of that, you know, at the five-year mark of this plan, and then especially at the 10-year where we would be, um, you know, there'd be a, a rewrite potentially of, of the 10-year plan. Um, so um, just just to clarify that, because the wording wording sounds like maybe we're just going off of a survey on, on, the, on the table there, but thanks for bringing that up. I also might mention when thinking about building gradual trails, just um, bringing up some of Erica's natural communities inventory pieces, um, which are, um, there's a map of those attached to the draft that's out there, but um, just so people take a second to look at that, there is um, kind of a seep, um, seep forest there uh, along the lower slopes that um, was really surfaced and brought to our attention as a commission. And just wanted to let folks know that we're aware of that as like a as a pretty special environment there, um, kind of on the way up to those steeper slopes. Any other questions, comments, ideas for North Branch before we shift to Hubbard? I have a general question, and I apologize if you talked about this and I missed it. Has any thinking about measuring progress or success on toward the plan, um, have these goals and the, the years I, that are identified with each part of the goal, has this been checked against reality in terms of our park staffing and capacity? Like, is, are we not at that point yet? Or have you already been in conversation with Alec about, is this feasible to take on so many different goals? That is a very fair question. Thank you for asking. And um, <laughs> thanks the- for, <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Emily. <laughs> uh, I'll just pitch there's, that there's the- a lot in this plan and it sounds wonderful, but the reality may not be able to meet yeah. that. Yeah, and um, yeah, we hear that. And the timeline was it, is the newest column on, on this map. And, you know, although we've been, you know, in the year making, you know, in the makings of a year for the goals, objectives, and actions, we are, we are just beginning to fine tune the actual timeline. So um, tonight, you know, on until we are able to pass, you know, a final plan here, we'll be looking closer at what is the actual capacity, who is responsible for each one of these, and making sure that gets into the final draft. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, and, and it is, it, we are, this is a work in progress. <laughs> And I would add that there are some of these um, pieces that are keeping things the same or are simply um, that they, they don't require a lot of action or heavy lifting. And I think that's one of the reasons there's a there's, you know, many goals that are listed in 2023 that are, you know, essentially like maintaining or ongoing type work. Um, but it's a really good point, Emily, um, that you bring up that we'll have to fine tune with Alec and staff.
Anybody else, any questions? Or else we'll take an extra five minutes for Hubbard. I'm sure we can use it. All right, um, let's go ahead and shift to Hubbard. And just as we do this, a reminder in case um, folks were here primarily for North Branch and, um, and stepping away, um, the link to continue to make comments was in the chat. It's also available on the city website, again, where the plan is available for download. Um, so please go ahead and um, and you're welcome to submit comments as there, there as well. Um, and Matt just added in the chat again. Um, so for, um, as we shift to Hubbard, um, I just wanted to start with kind of an overview of some of the things that we heard about Hubbard. Um, you know, first and foremost, I think we heard loud and clear that people like things the way they are. People really um, love Hubbard. There's really strong affinity for Hubbard. And much of the plan and things that are in the plan and in this chart are essentially codifying things to stay the same and not necessarily this to change. There all are also some things that are um, changes that we'll surely bring up tonight and highlight along the way. Um, but I think much of what's in there is to help things ensure that things stay the same going forward, which people seem to really appreciate. Um, it was really clear in the um, field walks. It was really wonderful to, to lead these walks with you all as community members in the parks this summer um, and also through the, the online narrative comment forms. It's really clear that people have a really strong affinity for the old forest in Hubbard. Um, some people called it old forest. Other people use it um, just um, recognized some of the things that are there, like mosses and ferns, um, a lot of language of people referring to places as fairy forest or hobbit land and things like that, that are really kind of descriptors of the elements that make up the old forest, which was neat to see and celebrated. Um, I think one thing that's um, important for Hubbard is that there are different areas of the park that are used in very different ways. Obviously, the, the southern tower areas see really high use um, and, and have the most popular trails or the most used trails. Um, when people um, speak about the northern areas of the park, basically from everywhere from seven fireplaces north, both in the, um, in, in the piece of the park that we already had and in the new parcels purchased last summer um, or this time last year, the language really shifts and changes and people across the board have been using words like wild and slow and escape and feeling like you're out there. Um, and I think that's been really noticeable to all the commissioners and also um, folks from the outside kind of looking and, and helping us look through comments. Um, and so pieces of what's in here um, and the plan also seek to preserve the natural environment and those Northern lands and also that kind of wild experience that people really appreciate in that part of the park. Um, and I think as um, um, Lincoln talked, shared earlier, there were a lot of um, surveys, conversations with, you know, various organizations and people across the community, um, walks, there, there's a lot of pieces that went into this plan, um, and um, we're looking forward to hearing from you all about it today. Um, let's go to part one and look at some of the goals here. So um, the first goal, again, if you want detail, you can download the full plan off the website. The first goal is to improve wayfinding for, throughout the park. I would summarize this as actions that make the park easier to find and make it harder to get lost. There are a lot of people that said they were confused where they were. Um, they weren't sure how to get from one place to another. And it prevented people from, or does prevent people from using the park and kind of exploring in the park for fear of getting lost. And so there are things here that hopefully make it easier to navigate throughout the park and also more welcoming to a wider range of people with various ranges of um, kind of experience and, and accessibility in, in natural places. Um, the second goal, um, Stephanie, if you go to the next slide, you'll, um, is to make it easier for people to ask, uh, access the park without motorized vehicles. Um, in within this, I just wanted to there there are a lot of bullet points in each of these, but these are things that we um, get questions about or, or, or have surfaced. So I wanted to make sure people know that this includes signing entrances 
um, from the new parcel um, from Wyndham Drive and also Essex Way and signing those as open and available to the public, which they are. Um, and also um, similar to um, what Lincoln was talking about for North Branch and um, making sure that people can walk and, and bike to the park, having um, crosswalks, sidewalks, and bike-friendly routes to get to the park. Um, so signed routes along the street so that people know this is a bike, this is a, a route to the park. Um, goal three, um, there are many amenities here. This touches on um, you know, a, a lot of what is here are, are things that we can do, services that we can pro provide to make our park more welcoming for people of all comfort levels and abilities. And so there are things in this um, within this goal that address repairing the fireplaces at seven fireplaces. Several people noted that they were kind of in disrepair and it would be great to be able to use them. The fitness trail equipment, um, upgrading that, um, providing um, uh, accessible access to this um, to the stage and one of the shelters at least so that people with different mobility issues could use the stage and use the shelters. Um, I did this also includes I know which is a very hot topic dogs. So this includes leashing dogs um, and proposes leashing dogs um, in essentially two areas. One is the Stone Power Path and accessible pay trail as well as roads um, that have cars on them, and also leashing within 150 feet of parking areas. And uh, the thinking here, you know, as a commission, we receive several um, incident reports a year of people who are um, un afraid of dogs, bit by dogs, pushed over by dogs, jumped on by dogs. Um, this does happen in our parks. And even if it's not happening, there are people who are afraid of this happening. And so one of the things that we've noticed in terms of a pattern in these incident reports is that many of these incidents are happening in parking areas or near parking areas near the trailheads. And it seems like one of the things that's happening is, you know, we all pull up to a trailhead and you let your dog out of the back of the car and it runs out and up the trail and you're still getting your jacket on or your backpack or your water bottle. Um, and your dog's kind of running around greeting everybody else. Um, or your dog's super excited and just sees another dog or another person and kind of runs for it. And so um, this seems like a space where we could reasonably ask people to leash their dog while they're at the parking area and in the first little bit of the trail. Um, seems like it would be a small act to reduce some of those incidents and make the park feel safer for more people. Um, and then the idea on the Stone Tower Path, path and Accessible Trail is that those are two of the most um, accessible trails in the park. They are wide, um, fair, they're not too steep, they're pretty flat, um, they're easy for people to walk side by side. And so a lot of people who have um, mobility issues or just you know need to take more time and watch their footing, these are trails that those people are using. And it's not fair to those people to have to also at the same time that they're watching their footing and, and um, getting out onto these trails um, also have to be on the lookout for dogs and what dog is going to come up behind them or, or towards them and jump on them or whatnot. Um, and so the idea here is to make those trails, um, they're already very accessible to a wide, wide range of people um, and they're very highly used. Those trails have the most people on them, the most kids, um, and um, have the, the highest, you know, possibility of conflict because of that. Um, so I do want, I did want to pause there since I know that's a really important issue. Um, let's go to um, number four. Um, so this um, goal is um, intended to kind of provide this balance between being a place of community and gathering, but also what we really heard loud and clear about Hubbard was that people appreciate that it's also a place for solitude and escape. And so there are these two kind of opposing and complementary pieces to try and manage for in the same space. Um, so within this, again, there are many things in here, but I wanted to highlight the things that I know are most important to, to folks here. Um, this would um, propose creating three new trails from Wyndham Drive to seven fireplaces, 
Um, two of them would be designed for pedestrians for foot traffic, um, one along the, the east of the parcel, um, kind of following the ridge for those who are familiar with the parcel, um, another a pedestrian path down the center, um, roughly through the narrow or the meadow or along the edge of the meadow, and then a multi-use pedestrian bike and ski trail on the west side of the parcel um, that would go north from Wyndham Drive um, towards seven fireplaces. It would also establish a pedestrian trail from Essex Way to the nearest park trail, which will be up on the plateau, most likely. Um, and then there's this northern plateau area, um, I, for lack of a better term to call it, um, for folks who have been back here, there, it's higher elevation. This is an area that really stands out in the natural community inventories and in people's just um, uh, comments and, and reflections on the park as being a really special area ecologically. Um, there, it's... Um, important wildlife habitat and and um, just supports really important plant, plant communities back there. Um, and so this proposes essentially one trail that would climb, you know, beginning from the south, it would climb up onto the plateau, there would be one loop on top and then descend down the northern edge of the plateau um, down towards the stump dump. Um, for folks who have been up there, this is roughly um, the trail that exists now, except I think that the trail now is essentially a social trail um, that was built over time. A part of it is kind of a washed out old road that's probably 100 years old or so. Um, so those pieces aren't very sustainable. Um, and for all of these really, um, you know, this would probably likely use some existing trail segments, but also give us the opportunity to look at where exactly these trails would make sense and place them in a place that can be sustainable and design them for the long term for the intended uses. Um, and then this also includes um, a action to explore opportunities to con construct a possible route accommodating bikes between Elm Street recreation fields to seven fireplaces um, or in reverse from seven fireplaces to Elm Street recreation fields. Um, and um, this collectively, um, for people who have been following and, and, and looking for this, would allow for bikes to go from the Wyndham Drive neighborhood through Hubbard Park, um, essentially th from Wyndham Drive to Seven Fireplaces, um, down to the Elm Street Recreation Fields, and then um, thereby connecting in with all of the bike trails that Lincoln was just talking about in North Branch Park and have the, the uh, loads of trails over there. So um, I think this meets a lot of the um, needs that we were hearing from the community um, and um, would provide new opportunities for people, especially on the new parcel. Um, let's go to um, number five. Um, educating visitors about Hubbard's unique natural and cultural feel, um, features. There are pieces in here regarding interpretive signs and educational walks and things like that. It's fairly self-explanatory. Um, and um, I think that's it. Um, I'm going to pause there and just as we did with North Branch, open things up for um, questions and comments. Um, and we do, um, we have about 20 minutes now that, and then we'll shift to the other kind of natural community side of Hubbard as well. All right. Um, let's see, Chris. Um, yeah, I just, I, I haven't been involved in some of the earlier, you know, I didn't make any of the walks or any of the earlier meetings, but could you give a little bit of perspective, this idea of closing off course street? Um, I mean, maybe you can give us a little background. I don't know where that idea came from. That's the first I've heard of it. Uh, we live right at Core Street, so that was part of the interest. But um, I, I guess either you could start by giving me a little bit of background or what kind of feedback came out of the work that you did that made that an, a, a recommendation. And then I could maybe just if, if, you, if I had that perspective, maybe I could then comment on it. Yeah, um, no, that's I great. Um, I let's I'll talk about course and also um, Park Drive. Parkway. Parkway, yes. Right. Yeah. Um, at the same time, because I think they're similar. I was actually surprised. Um, this came up in um, the the online survey and, and the narrative that 
um, a, a few people kind of independently said, what if we closed more roads in the park? And one of the best things that ever happened to Hubbard Park years ago was the decision to close roads. And, you know, you think about it and there are kind of trails that we call also roads, the road up to Hubbard Tower, the road to seven fireplaces, those function as trails now, but were, and, you know, years ago roads. And I think people really appreciate those places. Um, there were also people that were talking about um, not so much from Core Street, from but more from Parkway of saying, you know, I'm, I, you know, I live in the neighborhood and I want to walk up to the park, um, but when I go the, you know, around on the the east side there um, on Winter Street, I think it is, um, you know, it's steep or there are cars walk, passing me or when I go on Parkway, you know, it's also shared with cars. And so one of the ideas. Of, of doing this is it would be to effectively kind of make the um, make the edge of the park closer to the community. So if you're um, maybe not where you are, Chris, but down in the meadow neighborhood, um, right now the park is, you know, all the way up the hill by the gate entrance gates. Well, Parkway is a really kind of park feeling type of street where even if it were seasonally um, the park, you know, the um, the apron of the park would could kind of be brought down for pedestrian use of that road, then it would allow people to kind of physically enter the park space and be in the park more quickly um, and provide a safe route to the parks. Um, and then where you are, um, you know, I think we've seen a lot of the times that um, people are walking on the road and, and whatnot. Um, and it just seems like it would make sense potentially for you know, people to, to have more access of in, within the parks and, and convert some of those more to trail experience. I think one thing to note for both of those is it doesn't say we're going to do it. It says we're going to talk to the neighbors and talk to emergency services and, and talk to folks about doing it. Um, and it may be something that we think about seasonally, um, but essentially what this is doing is putting it on the table for discussion, but not saying this is going to happen. Um, I don't know if that was helpful at all, Chris. No, it's great. Um, I mean, I, I mean, because I live here, Core Street sometimes is really not passable, and I have to go through the park. If there's fresh snow, you don't want to go down to Core Street; it's just too slippery. And there's also a couple of places down at the bottom of the hill where there's springs right in the road, and when they freeze, the road is incredibly dangerous to drive down. And there's only three of us that live up here; everybody else is below that or maybe four. Um, so I, I think that's just one of the issue. I know that the fire trucks now can get up here going around that corner because they have a specific pump truck that they buy so they can get around that corner. Oh, Otherwise, interesting. They have to go through the park. And so I know that the, it's, it's, you know, they've dealt with this. Um, so that's my main concern is just be able to get to my house. If Core Street is closed permanently, I also am frequently hauling trailers and stuff like that. And usually I can get around the corner there, but um, we really depend on the on the course, course street in the park as our one of our main access is to get out of, you know, to leave the hill to get down to the bottom of the hill. Um, so that, that that's kind of my own selfish concern. But on the other hand, I really love it when they close the park during mud season because yeah. it's, it, and, and so it's, but the, the challenge there is that people, see the sign at the bottom of Cliff Street that says Hubbard Park, and they come up and they park right across from our house, which sometimes makes it really hard to back out of our driveway. So I think the challenge with closing off Core Street is if it's closed right at the gate, you end up having parking right on the road. And now some, a friend of ours was parking there the other day and they got ticketed. Well, Chris, I, I'm glad you brought it up, and I I, I want to keep talking with you about it, but I also want to give other folks a, a chance. Jill, um, I saw your hand go up. Thanks so much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to comment. Um, uh, so I guess I want to say I know that you guys are balancing a lot of different um, needs and input on, on Hubbard, and so it's definitely um, a complicated plan that you're trying to devise. Um, I, I have one broad comment, which is that um, I am a little concerned that the that the survey seems to be sort of this primary driver of the of the planning process because it, it just seems to me like it's there may be other 
it just doesn't seem necessarily like a really strong source of data. So I'm concerned about the reliance that I'm that I'm hearing. And so we we did put that in our written comments with some suggestions about other kinds of um, sources to use. And then specifically on um, goal four. Um, so we're really, um, I think those the connectors and the ability to, um, and the perimeter trail and the ability to get over to the North Branch trails will, um, I actually think achieve some of the, the goals that we were talking about on the North Branch side, which is some trails that don't have as much elevation change and that are easier to navigate and easier for um, uh, people who are newer to riding or um, have less fitness or um, less um, physical abilities. So I, I think that's those are all really good ideas. Um, and we really urge you to, to do them, particularly that, um, that connector to get us down to the North Branch trails. Um, our concern, and we, we put in the written comments, is just that there's like sort of some of these come with a lot of caveats, so many that I, I fear that they will preclude you doing a sort of the thoughtful planning process that I, I know you'll do. Um, but it seems like I, I fear pre-deciding the issue without the process. So we, we are asking you to simplify some of that language, um, particularly because it's really under a very, um, the, the overarching goal is all about balance and includes the word solitude and escape. So I, I think you've got quite a bit of um, kind of intent already described there without getting into all of those uh, details. So you'll see that in my written comments, some of the places where, um, where we really think uh, you could simplify and leave, leave it to the planning process. Um, and then to that end, we also, um, you know, this is a, there is this new parcel. It, this is, you know, a, a 10 year plan on something that we haven't had as much time to, to consider and think about. And we just urge you to leave a little more room in the plan for um, more opportunities to consider bike and cross country and pedestrian trail. So not to call for them or make anything specific, but just leave a little more space for that to be something that could be revisited um, over the course of this long period of time. Thanks, Joe. Um, let's see, um, Deborah. Hi, thank you. I, I first wanna say, you know, I, I'm really appreciating all the energy and creativity that's gone into all this planning. You know, I can feel this kind of sense of the renaissance of the whole park system. So thank you for that. Um, but I do agree with uh, Chris about my, I have concerns about closing off Core Street, you know, selfishly too. I live up here and it can be really dangerous to go go down the steep way down Core Street in the winter. Um, and I also agree with Jill about the, um, you know, be careful to rely too much on the survey and about anecdotal data. Um, but overall, I, I think, you know, this, your planning shows a lot of um, forward looking creativity, so thank you. Um, and since this came up, I think um, a couple of times now, you know, Lincoln mentioned this at the beginning, but it is not one survey that is guiding all of this. Um, it is a, there, there is a survey taken by 1300 people um, a year and a half ago, there it was a survey um, this summer. We also had all of these walks with people and conversations across the community. So um, um, and a natural communities inventory that is very extensive and about 30 pages long and very detailed. So there are a lot th of more things than just a survey. And I just want that to make sure that's clear for everybody um, going forward. Um, let's see who we have, um, Rebecca. Hello, um, can you hear me? Um, so my name is Rebecca Copians. I live on Cliff Street. Um, I appreciate what Lincoln said about um, this, you know, being a celebration of the park. Um, for me, every morning is a celebration of the park. I um, I would consider myself a heavy heavy user of um, of our natural resources, and um, we have an incredible. Um, really rich community around the park in the morning. Um, there are um, people that I see that I know through um, their dogs and their, um, they wouldn't be part of my community if not for those dogs and if not for um, being able to connect with them in the park on the morning, in the morning, on our morning walks. Um, I 
don't think that I think it's really narrow to think about, you know, eliminating um, just saying bar none, we're going to we're going to mandate that um, dogs are leashed because morning is all people walking their dog generally around dawn. Um, there are some others that don't, but um, midday is a different a different use of the park. Um, generally, when I walk in the middle of the afternoon um, around lunch, I do I do leash my dog because there's a lot of um, a lot of different, different people. But to have such a broad blanket um, uh, ordinance to say all leash dogs um, dogs should be leashed period, I think is, is really narrow. Um, we live on Cliff Street, so the only way to access the park is through the stone, you know, we go up the stone tower, um, pat, you know, to the, to, the pat, to the tower and then down and around. If I were to go to the northern part of the park, it takes an hour and 15 minutes to do the loop. Um, and I generally do my loop every morning, it's 40 minute, <laughs> a 40 minute loop. Um, it's my most consistent form of exercise. Um, and I think um, you said, specifically Cassia that um you want things to this, stay the same well this ordinance is fundamentally changing my life um and I really think you need to think more broadly about about how you're impacting people um and I would also like to ask how many of the commissioners of in the park um on the park commission have dogs who walk in the park um I think four of us including myself have dogs and maybe five of us yeah. Um, but I think most of us have dogs. Um, and I'm I just, so um, would you, are you suggesting a kind of time ordinance that maybe if this were something that went into effect like 10 a.m. on or, you know, different times, times of time or day, um, part of the suggestion here? Sure. I mean, I think as long as there's, there's um, a clear space for people to continue their normal life, um, I think that would be great. And I don't, I, I, I think I'm all for inclusivity on the park, you know, in the park. Um, it's a huge resource for everyone in our town, but to say that we're just gonna um, change it as a blanket statement is really um, short-sighted. Um, and then, so I don't have to come back um, and speak again. I There's a couple of really good ideas that I think um, you have. Um, one is to split the trails on, you know, walking um, and biking. It's not on these these points, but um, I think that's a great a great idea. Um, and I love the idea of transportation from one end of the park to the other for uh, for bikes. And that's that's great. So thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Eli. Hi, everybody. So um, I think I'm probably going to echo some of the points that Rebecca just made. Um, I am. And I and I think that there might be a little bit of. Um, you know, not to be offensive, but lack of foresight in what um, accessibility you know needs might be. I am a person who um, uh, does need accessible trails. I was um, diagnosed with metastatic cancer in uh, July of this year. I go to the trails daily. Um, it is a huge part of my recovery. Um, it's absolutely prolonging my life. Um, I go there with my children and I go there with my dog. Um, everybody that I meet along that trail, um, I usually go in the morning um, or um, midday. Everybody that I meet along the trail um, does have their dogs unleashed. I think in the past couple months, I've met maybe uh, maybe three or four people with their dogs leashed, and usually they're they're saying my dog's reactive and letting us know. And we're doing the regular dog etiquette of you know what people do who have dogs. Um, if the this was became a leash. Um, trail, I wouldn't use it. Um, I would have to find somewhere else. Um, and it's becoming less and less trails that seem to be available to have my dog um, off leash. Um, so I would have to find somewhere else to to be basically um, having this really important part of my treatment, my exercise, um, or I would have to try to use trails that I don't think would be accessible to me, um, um, as this one is. Um, I do have kids. I have young kids. I don't think that kids, I mean, maybe you're seeing, I don't know where the, the increase in um, in conflict comes up around kids. Um, I don't know if that's something that you've actually seen data around. And I would echo, I think a few people have said the measurement practices and, and how you're collecting the data and getting that input from people um, to be beyond a survey. I heard about this meeting tonight on trail when somebody mentioned to me that they were, that you guys were planning on um, 
making this a leash trail. Um, and that was upsetting to me. I do, I do, I think that inclusivity is incredibly important. And I think that there is a way um, to, to make this work for everybody. Um, I do think that the, you know, if these, a lot of these conflicts are happening when people are getting out of their cars, um, you know, maybe the, the having your dog on a leash um, until you get on a trail is a good idea. Um, uh, the other piece, I guess, kind of speaks to goal two. Um, I actually need a motorized vehicle to get to the trail um, to get to the point where I can actually get to the trail and have it be accessible. Otherwise, I would not be able to to use the trails that I do now. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Sandal, I think you've been waiting for a little while. And I'm, I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Hi. So, yes, Sandal is right, but it's really for Paul Kate. So thank you. And we didn't mind waiting. Thanks. All right. I'm interested in what you're doing. I haven't been very involved for years and years because I don't live directly in Montpelier uh, <clears throat> anymore, but uh, I'm wondering about what you're, you talk about getting information from other sources and I wasn't involved at all in what's happened in the last year, but I have spent, have, 50 plus years of experience in Hubbard Park. Uh, everything from being a kid playing in the park to uh, supervising in the park when we closed roads and built the new shelter and uh, <clears throat> the new ball field and we did the frog pond and, and you know quite a few different things that happened as a part of federal BOR funds back in the early 70s. And uh, so <clears throat> I'm just wondering how much you've thought about the, the long term <clears throat> and what you're really walking on when you're in Hubbard Park. And uh, it always amazes me that people think that, for example, that all those big trees are old old well what's old you know 30 years older than i am uh if that's the case you may be in the ballpark but generally old is considered to be 130 years plus anyway and those trees aren't even close <clears throat> so i'm wondering have you thought about what's actually going to be happening in that park decades from now? You know, is it going to be a jumble of intersections of trails uh, where you can see each other on the different trails or have clover leaves or whatever you want to call them? <clears throat> or are there going to be areas where uh, there aren't trails? Uh, or our trails have restricted use. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, so much of that park has changed in some ways, primarily with much more use than there used to be. I mean, we hardly ever saw people just walking up in the park with dogs or anything else. Uh, back, in the, back in the 60s, uh, <clears throat> late 50s. And, you know, now you're dealing with a whole series of different possibilities, which I think you want to think pretty carefully about if you think that, that, that all of those are going to be workable in Hubbard Park. You know, granted, there's been additions to the park, and that's great. I'm glad for Montpelier uh, <clears throat> and all of you folks. But I think there's there's a, a fair amount of things that have uh, changed as well as things that haven't. But 
but what's going to happen is that a lot of those big old trees, for example, that you that there was reference made to, uh, <clears throat> they're going to get old just like some of us, and uh, they're going to be gone. And the uh, effect that you're used to when people say they want it to stay the way it is, uh, you need to plan for that if that's what you actually want. If what you want is just to leave it alone and let nature do whatever, that's fine too, but you need to understand that that's gonna happen. Uh, and it's not uh, something that is gonna take care of itself and you'll have the same things that you see in your walks right now on into eternity. Uh, you know, if you can, Imagine what it must have looked like in parts of the park, even during World War II when they had victory gardens up there, which I remember being told a little bit about. And I, you know, people today would look at you and say, what? Well, you know, there's a lot of things like that in the park that I don't think probably have been in the popular uh, discussion. And, and I'm well, just wondering what plans that you, you know, how, how are you going about thinking about that in terms of uh, maintaining what you'd like to have there? Thank you. Um, those are great questions. And I'm really, thanks for sharing that perspective. I think we'd love to follow up with you and, and also hear more about your history and, and time with the park, because this is part of the management plan too, or, or the kind of background appendices is this kind of past use information. So um, we'd love to, to follow up with you. Um, and in terms of um, the, the, I think your, your questions about recreation and, and trails are, are great for us to think about. And then in terms of the, the forest and, and, and promoting the old forest, um, those are in the next set of goals here that we'll get for, to or in a second here and, and how we work to um, make sure those trees that are just a tad older than you are, a hundred years older than that in another hundred years. Um, Kara, you've had your hand up for a little bit. Thank you, Kasha. Kasha. Um, yeah, my it's a quick comment about the roads and the people. You, you mentioned that a lot of people, um, you know, were uncomfortable with with walking on the roads, and I'm always surprised at the number of people walking on the roads and there are trails that parallel most of the roads within you know sometimes within 20 feet sometimes within 50 feet but that travel the same routes and I'm wondering if maybe written into here somehow we could um you know put better signage about that so that people realize I mean I know sometimes it might be an accessibility thing that people are more comfortable with the flatness of the roads or something but it also may be that people don't realize that they could be walking on a trail to get to the same place in a pretty straightforward way. So Great. That's, that's all. Thanks, Kara. Um, let's see, Justin. Hey, thank you. I'm Justin Barnard. I live in Bailey Avenue and I am a heavy user of the park. My family and I are up there uh, daily, if not multiple times a day. Um, I wanna commend the commission on developing a plan that really uh, I think is in many ways forward looking and uh, adds to the park. It expands the opportunities to get people into the park. Um, and for that reason, I was somewhat disappointed at a couple of the items that made it into the plan. You know, I wanna echo some of the, the comments earlier on uh, the restrictions on dogs in Hubbard Park. Um, that's obviously been a hot issue, and in a plan that is, you know, I think largely positive, I think it strikes a sour note for those of us who are up there and have well-behaved dogs and use the park uh, extensively. I don't want to repeat what others have said, but I, it is very hard to find areas around here uh, that uh, are allow off-leash uh, dog walking um, and have the quality of experience that Hubbard Park does. I think there are going to be enforcement issues in the way that the restriction is proposed to apply to just some trails and some areas. I think it's going to be confusing. And the people who probably have the most problematic dogs and are causing most of the incidents aren't going to follow the rules anyway. Um, so 
I think it will reduce the quality of the park experience for those of us who are enthusiastic users with our dogs. Um, and I'm not sure I see a huge benefit. Um, the other point I want to make regards the uh, proposed closures of some of the trails. Um, there was a reference to closing social trails around the park. Uh, in my view, that is at odds with uh, Hubbard Park Goal 2 up on the screen here, make it easier for people to access the park without motorized vehicles. There are a lot of people from uh, various sides of the park who enter through those social trails um, and rely on them, and it would be very difficult to get into the park without using those trails. If there are conflicts with private property owners, that's really, I think, an issue for the private property owners to restrict the use of their, their land, um, and I would hate to see the social trails closed. So I want to hear a little bit more about that. Uh, I also uh, want to hear more about the planned closure of some of the smaller trails in the uh, tower area. It's not clear which trails uh, you're proposing discontinuing, but you know what we love about Hubbard Park are these small trails that take you off on your own away from the big trails. Um, so I'd hate to see that the opportunities to wander through the park be reduced rather than expanded. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, and I think um, the clarity, we've heard um, clarity around the social trails and, and what that means. Um, I think there are pieces of that that are surely important to keep in, but then aspects of it that, that probably don't make sense that we could clarify that we're not getting rid of everybody's trail from their backyard to the park um, isn't really in the uh, intent of that. So um, let's see, um, Saul, although I'm not sure that's probably not actually your name. Um, it's Julia. Uh, that's what, okay. Yeah, Julia Gresser, and, and I live in Montpelier. And um, I just want to echo practically everybody else who just is raving about, you know, the work that you all do. And uh, there's beautiful signage in the park. Uh, we're so ecstatic about the new the new addition to the park, and 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 just appreciate all the hard work that every everyone does. It's just an absolute treasure. Um, and I just want to make a couple comments about the uh, the leashing of dogs. And um, and again, I'm sure that a lot of thoughtfulness went into these recommendations. Um, but I just am going to say that. Um, you know, looking at this with my husband and our family, um, six incidents a year uh, is is extremely low, considering we actually counted the number of people that were with dogs going in and out of the park in just the time that we walked our dog last night. And, um, you know, there were about 12 uh, dogs with with owners. So, you know, there's there's easily a hundred, probably way, you know, quite a bit more than a hundred dogs and owners going into the park every day. And so six incidents a year, it to me is extremely low. I often think of it as, you know, a play, a large playground with children. Uh, there are going to be incidents, you know, there, there are going to be people that say, uh, that are upset about, you know, um, the dogs, your dog's behavior, whatever. I, I feel like the code of ethics is working beautifully. Um, I often will call out to people ahead of me if they look like they're a little bit frightened and say, would you like me to put my dog on a leash? And if they say, yeah, you know, I, I prefer, I say, sure, no problem. I call my dog, I put him on a leash. And we have these kind of interactions all the time in the park. Um, and I think, you know, my fear is that there are going to be people who are going to complain that a dog bumped into me or a dog jumped on me. Um, and I, I, I really feel like, you know, if you enact these restrictions uh, about, you know, the leash uh, areas, um, they, they're going to be, there are going to be more complaints next year. There's going to be more complaints the year after that. And I feel like it, it, it worries me greatly that um, the people who, the few people that come and say that there was an incident, I think you should listen to them, you know, and we should all take that into consideration. But I, I just feel like this, this haven where dogs have this very rare opportunity to be animals and to run 
is 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 going to be chipped away at gradually every year. I feel like already there every year there's kind of we have to be ready to defend the 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 territory that the little territory that we have where dogs can actually socialize with each other and actually get some really good exercise. It's not anybody who says that um, if your dog is well exercised by being on a leash all the time, it doesn't doesn't have a dog and doesn't know the needs of an animal like that. And I think that they're service animals, they're companions to us. And many of them sit in apartments and houses for hours and hours every day while we go to work. And this is their chance to, to have a little bit of time to actually uh, to run. And another thing is that, um, um, well, I just, I, I just want to um, open the, um, uh, I, I want to encourage others to have an, an opportunity here, Julia, if you just yeah. take another second. Okay. okay. Just one more second is that um, leashes um, uh, can, can, can also be somewhat hazardous for people my age. Um, there's a lot of, I broke my wrist last year with a couple of dogs that were crisscrossing with leashes on. So that's not a panacea either that 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 can be uh, that can be somewhat hazardous. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and let's see. I um, I see Nicole. You've had your hand up for a little bit. I also want to encourage others who maybe have a topic on your mind that hasn't been heard yet um, and an issue that hasn't brought up yet um, to 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 go ahead and kind of get in the queue with a line here. Um, your hand up here. So um, Nicole, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I want to thank the Parks Commission um, and the work that you've done reaching out for comment on your plan. Uh, I went on one of the guided tours over the summer and really appreciated how receptive and knowledgeable uh, you all were um, to suggestions. Uh, I live on Cliff Street. Uh, I'm a heavy user of the park. Um, and I would like to say that as a dog owner and daily walker in the park, as a neighboring property owner, and as someone who has hiked daily in the park for the last 18 years, I strongly support the commission's plan to designate the ADA trail and other areas as leashed. Leashed areas are a vital component for ensuring that the public at large and not just those who are able-bodied can reasonably and predictably expect a safe and enjoyable experience in the park without unduly risking a fall or another kind of encounter that could significantly alter their quality of life and independence for years to come. Given the recent acquisition of this new land, we've ample room to designate different areas of the park for different uses, including off-leash dogs. I love letting my dog run around and play off leash in the park. And I am yet still grateful to have designated areas so I don't have to guess what other walkers comfort levels are and thereby risk making others feel unwelcome or find myself in conflict with someone who has different needs or expectations from my own. I appreciate that this plan allows for predictability I appreciate that this plan still allows the vast majority of the park to allow dogs to be unleashed. And I, again, appreciate the park commission for their time and effort on this plan. And uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, Nicole, appreciate it. Um, let's see, Montpelier City Hall. It's... Oh, that's Alex. <laughs> go before me uh, I see Chris and OD and I don't know if we can't hear you yeah, Alex. I can't hear you very well <laughs> sit up uh, yeah I I'm anyone else with their hand raised should go before me okay let's see um how about um OD we can't hear you Well, she's working on that, Chris, um, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, um, just a quick comment. I mean, I, I agree with what Kara said earlier about just in particular on Core Street, 
but also Winter Street and the Parkway. I mean, when you think about the meadow, you think about Cliff Street, um, there's no way to get into the park unless you're on private land or if you're walking on the road. There's no sidewalks on Winter Street, Parkway, or Core Street. So, and I, and I notice a lot leaving our house, if I have to go through the park, there's lots of people on the, um, on the road. And so I think there are trails as Kara, as Kara mentioned, but they're not very wide. They're not particularly well maintained. And I don't think people even know about them. So that was just one thing. I mean, I think that's something to think about. Closing roads would be one option, but also thinking of maybe there's other ways to get access so people don't have to share the road walking with cars that are using the road. So that was one thing. Um, and I also I noticed that, you know, in terms of improving wayfinding, there's never been any kind of map uh, kiosk or anything at Core Street. And I frequently have people walk by our house and they're like, where am I? How do I get back to my car? And their their car is like on Elm Street or and so I, I think I don't know why that's never been 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 done, but it's just like every inch there's a nice there's a nice uh you know sign at the Winter Street Gate. There's one up at Hubbard Park Drive. I think Core Street needs one too. Um for all those people that access through <clears throat> Or people that are leaving the park and wonder where the hell they are, to just have a map there would make it really simple. Um, Great, just, um, a, just a suggestion. Maybe the, maybe that's part of the plan, but I didn't see that particularly called out. As no, those know, are those are helpful suggestions. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Um, I do want to move along to the um, second half. This was just the first half of the Hubbard Park plan. <laughs> we should get to the second half, seeing as it's almost eight o'clock. Um, so let's go to part two here, um, which um, addresses um, kind of the natural community um, aspects of the park. So um, I had mentioned this earlier, um, but the um, a lot of people um, in conversation and, and when they refer to the park, um, talk about the fairy, fairy, fairy forest and hobbit homes. And um, the idea of gold six here is to um, um, promote the the re promote the old growth forest and, and the true character of an old growth forest um, that we're beginning to see today and appreciate and that in a hundred years from now it'll be even um, in, in, enhanced with down trees and fungi and ferns and all those uh, those pieces that make up a healthy ecosystem. Um, and then um, goal seven um, is, um, would maintain three forest openings, um, within the park. Um, these are, um, places that are, they're open now. They include the, um, Hubbard Tower area, the Sledding Hill, and the meadow, at, um, just above Wyndham Drive. Um, these are places that we can, um, encourage the growth of native grasses and wildflower species and, um, and also kind of regularly, um, uh, brush hog or, or mow, um, um, to keep the, them open as forest openings, um, and, um, and, and, and promote pot pollinators and, and ed edge habitat species. Um, and then goal, finally goal eight, um, is, um, mentioned specifically the natural communities. I've included a, um, a, a little bit of Erica's maps here. A larger version of this is in the plan to download. And then, um, this is just a subset of her overall, um, natural communities inventory, but um, this would um, call for maintaining or decreased trail density within the priority natural communities, um, keep dogs out of vernal pools specifically, um, because these are such, such sensitive habitat areas and very attractive to dogs because dogs love water, um, uh, monitoring and addressing invasive weeds, and um, uh, and and making sure that invasives don't extend into Hubbard Park, which um, of course, does have some, you know, invasives and whatnot, but especially the northern ends have um, really rich, um, rich hardwood forests there um, that we want to, to keep the native plants and protect those natural communities. Um, so shifting to these three kind of um, natural communities, ecological goals, um, I'd love to hear folks' comments on these or questions and whatnot to add to this piece.
Less exciting than talking about dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see who, um, Brett. Yes. Um, uh, hello, I'm Brett Ingstrom, and I am not, uh, I do not live in Montpelier, but um, I have done a lot of work uh, over the years in, in um, uh, Montpelier and the parks specifically, uh, and I helped uh, in an advisory role to um, Erica for her natural community mapping of the two parks. And I would just like to speak strongly in favor of, of um, the goal eight you have and, and also goal six, uh, both promoting old forest, uh, but also the, you, you mentioned the um, rich Northern hardwood forest. That's a very special place ecologically. Um, and I did my work there in 2006 and 2007, but even Liz Thompson uh, identified that is a very special place back in oh, 1996, I believe it was. So that's been known about for a long time. And it's a very, uh, it has high biodiversity, uh, uh, values and it's a it's a special place it's a wild place um, and I would just encourage you to really uh, try to protect that that uh, rich northern hardwood forest in particular but your other older forest the better examples um, I think they're just uh, they're very special places and it's uh, not only for people, uh, the park, and so there, we have to think about the myriads of other species that uh, want to live there too. And um, so let's, uh, I, I just encourage you to um, strongly protect those areas. That's it. Thanks, Brett, appreciate it. Um, let's see, I can't tell who has an old hand up or a new hand. Um, Kara, I think your hand is new. It is, thank you. One quick comment about on goal eight about the vernal pools is I think it would be important to fence the vernal pools even on on leash areas because once in a while people don't follow the rules and um, you know, the, a lot of damage can be done uh, pretty quickly to a vernal pool. Uh, so that might be considered to fence all of them that are close to the trails. Great, thanks, Kara. Um, Sandal, is your hand up again? Might be an old one. Okay, then, <laughs> um, then Alec or Chris? I could go. Um, the, I, I guess I had one question about the, I agree that, you know, some of those older late successional forests up in the northern part of Hubbard Park that Brett talked about are, are really beautiful. And um, I think, but also people look at sort of the entrance to Core Street and there's these big old majestic pines that look old, but they're not even a hundred years old. Um, and there, there can be really prone to being dumped down by big windstorms. And we had a huge uh, windstorm, I don't know, it was four or five years ago, and a lot of those pines ended up on the ground. And so you say in the plan, prohibit commercial harvest. And I'm just wondering, does that mean, I mean, I don't think anybody wants to see a big timber sale, but what do you do with all the non-native scotch pine and or red pine or whatever it is. Um, there's some up at by seven fireplaces. There's there's some that's actually on state land. Um, and what if you have a big windstorm and you have all these trees that come down? Are you prohibited from selling them? I'm just wondering what that prohibit prohibition on commercial harvest means because that's not really defined. Because um, there there may be times when 
you got all this ash trees you're taking out and you want to be able to sell it to raise some money. I mean, is that prohibited by that no commercial harvest? Um, it's not clear in the in that uh, action plan or whatever it is. Thanks, Chris. Great question. Emily. Yeah, I just wanted to share. Um, Odie posted her question in the comments and she said. Oh, thank you. Yeah, she said, my question's regarding the access to the new section of the park via Wyndham and Essex Way. I live in this neighborhood and have had neighbors, have heard neighbors concerned about people parking along the streets near houses. Is there any plan for parking areas for people who want to get into the new section in this neighborhood? Um, I think the um, answer to that question currently is no, um, but it doesn't mean there couldn't be. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm on North Park Drive myself, and we also have an access point here. There's not specific parking, but people do, um, park along the side of the road. So, um, but not, they're not significantly. Well, I know on the other side of the park, um, like Hubbard Drive, there are a lot of cars parking there, um, and neighbors are concerned about that. So I think it's something to, to keep an eye on. Um, I think Essex Way, um, it would be new and there aren't, you know, any trends established. And I think it, you know, it's kind of unknown of how many people would be looking to park there and um, get up to that kind of corner of the park. Um, Alec. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, great. Um, I have a lot of comments. Um, I, it's very humbling to be here with people like, Paul Kate and Chris, and yeah, Paul and Sandal, and yeah, just thinking about all the many hands that have gone into this park and being a part of that now. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Really appreciate the process. Um, and after sitting on these for a month, I do have a lot of comments, mostly at the action level. And I didn't submit them in advance because I saw that you guys were getting a lot of comments written and I didn't want to overwhelm you with those. Um, so I guess my first question is, do you, would you prefer to have them all here in this setting or do you want me to submit a more detailed list of uh, written comments? I think Alec, you and I should could just connect one-on-one, -on -one, I think would be most helpful and let save the space for the community to, to you know, speak and connect and share. Okay. Yeah. T. Duggan. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tim Duggan. I'm a heavy park user. I just found out about um, that there was this rulemaking process going on. Um, and I guess to this point that was just being raised, I, I, I definitely have some thoughts, but they're pretty uninformed right now because I haven't given the plan its due. And I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity still for me to you know follow up in writing or is this sort of last shot or what what's what's the where are we yeah great question so um i this is a, a piece in the process so um we have the draft plan and of course hearing people's comments and feedback tonight i think one of the things that's been important to us as a commission is to make sure that we're hearing from a range of people in a variety of ways Many people are glad to raise a hand and speak up in, in a forum like this and, and you know, read the whole plan ahead of time. Other people come to something like this hearing, a, you know, knowing of it, but hearing about it and then looking for details and information. Um, and so for that reason, we also have um, an online um, comment form. Um, it's really kind of like a, it's, it's almost the equivalent of sending a mail, email. It just allows us to kind of keep all the comments in one place and, and organize people's feedback based on, on goals so that we can make the best use of it. Um, and if Matt is still here, he can maybe drop a link into the chat with that <laughs> link again. I, I um, and we welcome people to um, continue um, using that tool to comment um, and then, of course, we're all people. So email and phone and, and meeting up and things like that are also helpful. So um, but the online um, online comment form is probably the best space to um, yeah, definitely spend time with the plan and look through it and and comment there would be fantastic. And okay. Kasha, the deadline we're looking at end of December, right? Yes, end of December. So um, December 31 would be great. Okay, Thank that's what I was looking at. I, I, I am a, a huge fan of everybody's work in the park. It's a wonderful place. Big fan of all the things that Alex done with it. And so before I go off uh, uninformed, I, I'd love to just read it a little bit more thoroughly. Thank you very much. 
No, that's fantastic. And we are just at eight o'clock here now. So that's maybe a perfect segue into just kind of rounding things out here. Um, I, um, um, the, the next steps for us as a commission are, you know, we'll be um, taking all of these great ideas and suggestions into consideration. We've been receiving emails with some ideas um, and some are very specific and some are big processing through that. Um, and like I just said, go online and, and add comments there. Um, we will process those comments and tweak the draft and make updates and then bring um, an updated version forward for consideration um, at our January Parks Commission meeting, which should be the third Tuesday in January. I'm not sure what the date is, but whatever the third Tuesday is, um, we meet again from six to eight. Um, and we'll be looking at um, again and either, um, you know, we'll see where the plan is and, and, and how, how, how it is and how we're all feeling about it. But um, it's possible that we may be ready to move forward with a final plan in January or perhaps February at the latest, I think is what our timeline is. Um, but that gives plenty of time for back and forth between then and now. Um, any last comments or anything before we close out? Anything from the commissioners of final thoughts or anything? I'm really grateful for all of you here tonight and um, spending your evening with us. I know being on a Parks Commission meeting is not always the most fun way to spend your Tuesday evening, um, but it's really important that we hear from all of you and, and really helpful feedback. Emily. Yes, I just, there were a couple of people who wanted to hear Alex's comments, so I'm challenging you, Alex, oh, to summarize your comments. <laughs> can you can you summarize your comments in five sentences? <laughs> No, because my comments are all very specific to action items. So yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. think I can summarize them in a, any, no, the answer is no, I cannot summarize them. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we will get them incorporated for sure. I, I just want to jump back in here. Um, yeah. And say thanks for everybody who's been a part of this process. And it's, you know, it's, it's such a shared value, our parks in Montpelier. And I think in the planning process, it's easy to get into the feeling of there's this us versus them. Um, but as a commission, we're really trying to, um, you know, be the interface for, you know, what we're hearing from the public and, and hold the mirror up to back to the community. Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot to balance here and I think we're, we're getting pretty close. That's what I'm hearing from you all tonight. And there's some fine tuning and some, you know, some language updates and, um, clarification to be done and, and still much work to be done here. But uh, just thank you for coming tonight. And, and these meetings are lengthy and, um, and digital and tiring, but we're, we're doing good work here. So, I, you know, we, we really want to hear from your, if you haven't spoken tonight, so please use the, use the survey monkey that Kasha has created. Thanks, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Thanks, Kasha. Thanks, Kasha. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.